are looking live at a daily chart of the NASDAQ. And um, yesterday, and the machines, you know, hit the sell button and the programs fired up after uh, Jerome Powell said no uh, rate cuts in March. And uh, that's kind of what happens. It just pulled back to its uh, 21 today. I told you just relax. And um, we got a little bounce today. We got about half of it back, maybe a little more, 197 points today, 1.3% close at 15,361. Yesterday was down 345 points. We got more than half of it back. I just want to show you like on a 10 minute chart of, you know, when uh, Pal right here, when Pal, when he mentioned, you know, that no rate cuts, it just the programs went on. All the stocks did the same thing. Everything just sold off with um, with that news, right? And so today it gaps higher and we get, like I said, more than half of it back. That's why I tell you, just relax and don't um, you know get shaken out of your positions here. There it is on a five minute chart, you know, pretty pretty pronounced uh, selling there into the close. Today we get half back. So just relax, take a deep breath. The index is in a, you know, power trend higher. You know, it's going to pull back. I tell you, when it gets 6% above its 50, it gets cranky. And that's what happened here. It got 6.1% uh, above its um, uh, 50 on Monday. And it just pulled back Tuesday, Wednesday. Today we get an inside day. Tomorrow looks a little better because of the after hours action. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Uh, but first, I'm going to go through a couple of names here. <laughs> I'm not going to do the Russell and the Dow and all that. I'm just going to do the NASDAQ. This is where the growth is, and this is where um, some of our stronger stocks are um, are working for us. And I've got to get to the data center stock. This is SMCI. And, you know, I got people yelling at me that it's a climax top. You got to sell it, blah, blah, blah. This is reminding me a lot of the uh, 90s, late 90s, when we saw stocks like um, CMGI and JDSU. Just a, a lot of stocks just ramped like this. This is not a climax top. Not yet, anyway. It might climax, but you can see on the weekly, just a breakout from a base. Um, it's gone a little higher than I thought it would. But, um, yeah, the breakout there from 357. And now it's at, you know, nearly 600 after hours. So, um, yeah, it's getting heated, but um, it's a, what, a 30 billion market cap, 32 billion with um, about 15 billion in sales. So it's only trading at two times sales. So it's not like super expensive, um, but it's getting there in a hurry. I would imagine when it gets to 600, it'll take a little bit of a rest there. We'll see if it has problems with that round number. Another one uh, that's in the data center area is uh, Vertiv. And this one broke out of the base back in October. Yeah, early October, pulled back to its 50 once, and it's just been riding the um, moving averages ever since. So uh, that one looks good to me as well. Uh, let me see what else. Oh, yeah, I got to get done. Some of these um, computer tech services, is uh, Giga Cloud technology, this is a... Um, computer tech stock uh, that's based in Hong Kong, but definitely a strong stock. We noticed it when it was up 26.45, wait for the pullback. And if you got in here, you're fine. Um, it's making higher lows um, since this low here. It's a wild stock, but uh, I like it above 26.45. That may show up on our uh, list here pretty soon. And then Datadog, another is a software name. It's up big after hours because of the Amazon report. There was a report recently that saying that AWS numbers were slowing and that Datadog was going to have bad report, but that's all BS. That's why you got to watch this fear that people spread on Wall Street. It's a bunch of junk. Um, but uh, it's moving, you know, it's trading above its uh, moving averages and looking good. It's pinching in here nicely. If you just look at the weekly chart for Datadog, this thing has not even broken out yet. I expect a breakout, though, um, after they report earnings. Hopefully, I mean, they report strong earnings. I would imagine they would, based on those AWS numbers. Anyway, I'm going to move on. A couple of stocks um, that you know, I have to make notice of is uh, NXT. This is a um, solar stock. It's uh, in the week, one of the weakest groups, 197 groups. It's 193 with Enphase and Solar Edge. But this one uh, jumped nearly 25% on uh, heavy volume. So that is one not to be ignored. I like uh, I like those uh, power earnings gaps higher. Um, okay, I'm going to get to a couple other um, 
semiconductor stocks. AMD, you know, if you just read the headlines, the people were saying this is a junky, you know, quarter, it sucked. This is a very good quarter for AMD. Their um, data centers are, are hitting on all cylinders. They're really strong. The CEO talked about a 400 billion um, a total addressable market and just getting started. We're in the first inning here. So you got to give something like this a chance to play out. If it's a big AI revolution, like she says it is, um, you got to give it not only quarters, but years to play out. So I just look at these uh, big blue bars. It tells me that investors want in this stock. Even after the report, it just pulled back to its 21. So somebody likes this stock. Um, somebody with money, like big institutions. So I'm not going to fight them. If you know they can only push it down, the shorts can only push it down and sell it to the 21. I like that. And that to me, that's it's like an opportunity. If you want to own a uh, semiconductor stock, Broadcom's another one with that ascending base pattern just traded back to its 10. I mean, any stock above its 10 EMA is... Uh, doing great. Uh, okay, I'm going to move on. <laughs> the home builders, I had Lennar on our ready list today. I think people thought I was crazy, but it was up nearly 3%. Um, it's still trading within a base, though. Its standard buy point is up, you know, 156, but I liked it as it was just, uh, you know, getting supported. It's moving averages. I still like it. Um, DHI is the largest home builder. Pulled back below its 50 and now rallied back above above all its moving averages, up more than 3% today. Looks very good. Pulte Homes, I believe, made... Uh, okay, this one's just kind of trading in a, a shelf-like pattern, but uh, trading above its uh, moving averages. That one looks good as well. And Builder, this is one that has been on our um, ready list as well, and definitely surfing the moving averages here. And that thing looks like it's just going to trend higher. Um up 3% today. So that's it for the home builders. They're pretty strong today. Um, I got to get to <laughs> some stocks that I don't, you know, talk about very often, but Caterpillar, when you see Caterpillar making new highs, you know, it's a pretty strong economy. And uh, Caterpillar today made a new high. You can see just this 293. A uh, buy point, 299.20 is a high in the handle and undercut the 21, then rallied above. And that the, that's a thing of beauty right there. I mean, if you want to own a, a stock like that, it's a slower moving stock. Pays you a dividend, pays you to hold it. But uh, the construction stock looked very good. Uh, Eaton is a diversified operation stock. Gap tire, nearly 8% following an earnings report. That looks fantastic. TT, this is uh, Train Technologies, the uh, HVAC group, uh, powered higher um, with earnings. Ingersoll ran another one in the machinery industrial. I'm just trying to show you that the market's spreading out. These rallies, this bull market is really spreading out to a lot of uh, different areas. And, and a lot of these uh, stocks looks good. I never thought I would you know, feature Ingersoll Rand. Or um, how about... Parker Hannafin, just a massive gap higher, 8% uh, with volume. So, yeah, I would say that's a nice clean breakout and a move higher for Parker Hannafin, for Caterpillar, for Ingersoll Rand, for Train, for Eaton. I mean, Jiminy Crickets, this is quite the bull market. Merck reported earnings this morning. Very strong uh, key true to sales. Uh, you know, this is just a breakout from a base. You can see this cup shape pattern, three weeks tight. So don't tell me that breakouts aren't working. This is a big, um, uh, you know, 320 billion market cap stock. Just fantastic action right there. Novo Nordis reported yesterday, gapped higher. Today, people were giving me a hard time about it because it was down and the market was up. Big deal. This thing gapped higher and it sold off in the morning, went green to red. Finished a buck higher or something, big deal. This is one of those stocks that, let I me mean, just take a look at it. My first buy was in 99, you know, for under a buck probably now. I haven't even looked, but this thing was just a big winner for a long time. So um, I don't know, maybe I'm sensitive to people giving me a hard time. I should be used to it by now. Um, anyway, move on. Eli Lilly is one that's on our ready list. It's starting to push away from its base here. 
but not quite yet. I still think this is actionable, but uh, they report earnings uh, next Tuesday. And I think 700 should be uh, a pretty good target. I'm not predicting anything. I'm just saying that, you know, a breakout from a base and a, you know, you know, 10% move would be like 60, $62, $65 from 630. So it's going to get you right there around 700. We'll see. We'll just have to wait for the data, but definitely their, um, their uh, drugs are in demand. Any more drug stocks you want to talk about, Marty? Oh yeah. EYPT. High point made a new high today. I know some of the, you know, some gurus were saying this is, um, you know, just close up shop. That's why you don't listen to people. Um, just <laughs> go with what you see and you can see these big blue volume bars and this thing's making new highs. So I know, you know, it's not, uh, it's very expensive and it's one of those spec speculative uh, stocks, but it's making new highs. So um, that one looks good. Viking is another one. It didn't participate today, down 19%, but traded down to its 10. This, they're going to report, you know, whatever earnings they have. They're going to really just give you data on their, um, their compounds. They have four different drugs that, you know, this is definitely a um, potential buyout target for the weight loss, diabetes uh, area. Anyway, I'm going to move on to um, the medical. I talked yesterday about some of the medical stocks, and this is a THC, and I should have had this on my ready list, but, the, you know, they reported earnings today and gapped higher. It's pushing, you know, it's getting away from its base now, a little bit extended here. I'm not comfortable putting this on a ready list at, um, you know, 7% above its 10 EMA, but congrats to the longs. That was set up nicely. You can see how it traded tight within its base until, whoops, this day, and then uh, calmed down and today blasted higher. But THC looks uh, very good. Intuitive Surgical, another stock that I like a lot, but it's just um, broke out of this base, pulled back to the 21 one time, now surfing the 10, just uh, trending nicely. Intuitive surgical looks nice. And another oldie but goodie shockwave trying to emerge from a stage one base. And if it starts getting above the 200, I might entertain putting this on our ready list. Anyway, um, that's it for me, I think. Oh, I could go through a couple of uh, names on my ready list. This is Car Carrier and um, just you know, hugging the 50, trading tight, earnings next week. This should look familiar here. This type of action usually leads to, um, you know, good things for the stock. Fix, this is one that just uh, was on our ready list, I believe, last week, but blew out of the base here. Maybe it's on this week. I don't know. I would have to look. But uh, definitely showing strength, and now it's moving uh, out away from its buy point there of 211 so um fix looks good what was the other one that i was going to show oh mod this one is um very strong stock just trending higher so the air conditioning stocks are fantastic i'm not going to go through the all our ready list stuff i'm going to move on actually i'm going to say that's it for today except for i lie i always lie and um in the honor of the great steve jobs i'm going to go through some of our um well, because the market's always about growth and looking forward and the next, what's next. And what's next is our earnings tonight is going to dictate uh, how the markets react tomorrow. And Apple, um, even though I've got to look through their report and listen to their conference call, but they had really weak sales in China and their iPhone sales missed slightly, even though they have a new iPhone 15 so they're, they're running up against some headwinds here with their watch. And um, it's selling off after hours at uh, 184. And you can see the uh, 200 there is 182.40. So it might take a trip back to the um, 200. So this is one of your uh, weaker um, mag, mag 6 stocks now, Super 6. Microsoft is one that, you know, yesterday sold off when the algos uh, turned their... Uh, you know, sell programs on undercut the 10 now had an inside day today and look strong after hours because of some more earnings that I'm going to get to Google. Another one that sold off after earnings inside day today. And this one uh, looks better. Why? Well, because Meta, Meta um, reported 
just blowout quarter. Um, Fifty billion buyback program. They initiated a 50 cent quarterly dividend and what that does is it opens up other mutual funds to um buy meta platforms it puts it in another classification not just a growth stock but a value dividend play as well so up uh 60 bucks after hours at 453 so congrats to the facebook meta platform longs amazon is up pretty strong as well. Yeah, 9%. That's a heck of a move. Amazon just crushed it. Now, their AWS numbers were up better than expected, like 13%, uh, I believe. And this was telegraphed from the Microsoft earnings report. If you connect the dots, Azure sales were stronger. So that you know, kind of portend or boded well for the AWS sales. And of course, we had retail sales data recently. This showed the retail numbers really strong, and Amazon's our largest uh, retailer. Um, so it's, you know, you could just kind of put two and two together and figure that Amazon was going to have a pretty good quarter. Um, so their Christmas quarter uh, report, you know, up 9%. Gosh, congrats to the longs. That's fantastic. Meta and um, Amazon are going to drive the action tomorrow. I mean, Apple... Um, you know, it doesn't have really the AI component. They've kind of stalled and stagnated a little bit. I know everybody holds it in their fund and everything, but it's just, um, it's not, uh, it's it's seen, probably seen its best days unless they can do some innovating. This is uh, NVIDIA, and this is going to piggyback on the Meta and um, Amazon earnings reports, and it's going to open up tomorrow at an all-time high. Now, I could sit here and tell you that I believe it's going to 900, but that would be predicting, and I don't predict, um, but but I do believe that. And I told you earlier, uh, I put it on my website, that in a bull market, you can't imagine how high stocks can go. And in a bear market, you can't imagine how low they will go. And we saw that with a lot of the software names that really sold off heavily. And now we're in a bull market, and we're going to see some of these names uh go a lot higher than many people think including you know this one smci and nvidia are two that uh well I, I, i'm a little um biased because those are two two of my um larger stocks but another report after hours today is deckers up um 38 bucks or nearly five percent they really crushed it with their hoka and uggs brand the ceo dave powers is announcing his retirement in August. He's going to step down and stay on the board through 2025, I believe. But the Hoka's are just on fire. This should bode well for ONON. I didn't look at this. Nope. No action. Um, oh, I know why. Crocs, no action. Because Skechers. Skechers missed. Yeah, and they're down more than 10% after hours. So there's a lot going on after hours uh, today. I'm going to get to this tomorrow morning. I'm sorry about my report today. There was a glitch, a technological glitch, which I worked with the IT guys, and that's not going to happen again. Um, but I'm going to have all this data here for uh, tomorrow morning. We'll see what's moving. Clorox reported a strong quarter, up 7%. And uh, they're going to you know, trade above the uh, 200 tomorrow. Um, so just a lot of good things happening in the market. Um, like I say, NVIDIA opening up. At an all-time high tomorrow, Meta opening up at an all-time high tomorrow, 4, 451. That's a beautiful thing. Amazon opening up tomorrow at an all-time high. But it's still a stock picker's market. As I showed you, Deckers in the footwear category is doing great. Skechers, Crocs, not so much. Amazon, Meta, NVIDIA doing great. Uh, Apple, not so much. Tesla, not so much. So, um. Yeah, you just can't do buy anything because it's a bull market. You have to um, you have to be selective, and I have quite a few good names uh, at mcstockcharts.com. Anyway, um, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Um, you know, gosh, since I'm doing this, and I showed you Datadog after hours, these are rate sensitive companies, and that's why they sold off when uh, Powell said no rate cuts in March and because they're you know snowflake is more sensitive to interest rates as is you know they're you know these are richly valued growth stocks and um we're going to get our lower rates it's a question of when not if and these stocks are going to do well 
uh, when they do lower rates. Anyway, I'm uh, rambling on now. Um, thank you for watching. I'm going to have more information tomorrow morning. No more glitches at mcstockcharts.com. We never give up.